Now, I know what you're thinking. I can't believe this absolute mad lad went and did it again. Yes, this is true. This is actually happening. This is the third. The third Daytona 675R that I've bought. I have a problem. I really, really, really have a problem. Today, I'm gonna be walking you through why I've bought another Daytona 675R against everyone's better judgment wishes and everything else. Um, why I do still think that this is one of the best motorcycles ever made, clearly since I've bought three of them. And just, you know, what the plan is with it, what's going on with it, a little bit of a yam update of why I actually bought this bike. So let's get into it. I think a walk around of the machine is in order so you guys get a feel for what it is we're working with here. So this is a 2015 uh, Triumph Daytona 675R, so the R edition in case you don't know. Comes with old lens, a quick shifter, some carbon fiber bits, and it's really the, the, the model to get in my opinion because uh, for the minimum amount extra you're paying for it, um, you're getting a lot of bang for your buck. So let's go over this specific example and let's take a listen to it as well. So I picked up this bike for about eight grand or so. Um, it's uh, a lightly used 2015 model, so I got an okay deal on it. Um, it's a really good 10 foot bike. From about right here, you're like, nice. It looks pretty in shape and pretty in, in good condition. Um, there's a couple things on it that aren't perfect. Uh, I'll point to your attention, the fact that these levers are broken. This broke a little bit. Um, we'll also point you to the fact that uh, that also happened over here. So. Obviously this bike was dropped once or twice, not a huge deal to me. I took it out on a test drive and it's all working in good shape. The important thing to me was that all the components are working and everything's in good working order. Major components of the motorcycle are all in good shape. I took it on a nice test drive and got everything sorted out. Uh, first thing we're going to do immediately on this bike though is get rid of these tires that are on it right now. I can't stand these tires. Um, in the minimum test drive that I took, I really don't like them, but we've got some RS10s waiting for us for this bike. Yeah, so it's in really good condition, honestly. All things considered, it, it, it could be a lot worse for a used motorcycle. Uh, it's got about 6,800 miles on it or so. Uh, this is the first Daytona that I've bought that is used. My past two ones were brand spanking new. Um, so this one's already been broken in a little bit. Uh, looks to be in pretty good shape, looks to be in pretty good nick, so hopefully it's not gonna be an issue. And as you can tell, it comes with the arrow on it, which I used to think that the Daytona didn't need an exhaust because um, I was, to be honest, just too cheap and I didn't see the point in buying an exhaust for one or two horsepower extra. But nowadays I'm like, you know what, if it comes with it, it comes with it. And also, as you can tell, this one is black and not white like my other two were because, you know, it's time for a change. It's time to do something a little bit different, time to get something a little bit different going on here rather than getting the same bike over and over again. So let's get a nice little startup of it though. Hey guys, it's uh, Yam from the future here. I'm editing up that video for the day 10 reveal. Um, I feel like I didn't say everything I wanted to say in the video, uh, so I wanted to add a couple other things. It's really, so one of the big things for me was actually jumping back on a motorcycle was a really, really big deal for me after my wreck. Um, as a lot of you guys know that I crashed pretty, pretty hard uh, about two years ago, uh, entirely my fault, but it was pretty brutal. Um, and it was really cool during that time where I didn't ride and was kind of recovering, getting ready to ride again, um, that a lot of you reached out to me and sent me emails and DMs and comments, you know, encouraging me to get back on the horse and to, to do it again. Um, you know, sometimes we make memes and jokes about the, the crash and the, uh, you know, the Daytonas and this and that. And it, and it is funny. Like, it is objectively funny to, you know, be like, oh, he's a double Daytona Slayer. He's, you know, this and that. But at the end of the day, um, it's a really big deal for me to be riding again and to be doing it in a really safe and controlled way and to not, um, 
live my life the way I used to live it. Um, that, that's the reason why I want to keep the bike as a track bike only. That's the reason why I want to treat riding as a craft and to, to truly improve at it rather than, you know, riding on the street and think you're improving when really you're not doing much of an improvement in reality, you know. I mean, to be honest, like, I, I sat there and I watched it twist the wrist, like, tons of times and wanted to improve and do this and that, but there's really no replacement for track time in a controlled environment in uh, controlled conditions rather than on the street. Um, so my sort of unsolicited advice to all of you out there who uh, don't do track days or doing the kind of riding that I used to do, um, it's a risky game and it's really not worth playing. So uh, just take that for what you will. Just wanted to add that in there. I'm super stoked on the new Daytona. I think it's gonna be an excellent track bike and we'll get back to the video. So let's talk a little bit over why I chose another Daytona versus something like an R6 or a ZX6. Um, so here's the thing. Originally, when I started this whole journey, uh, what I was looking for is a dedicated track bike. So this bike actually will live at Eagles Canyon Raceway here in Denton, uh, around Denton area in North Texas. Uh, So the bike's gonna live at Eagles Canyon Raceway, so it's not gonna be a street bike. Um, and so that makes the calculus a little bit different for me and what I'm actually looking for for a bike. I could have bought a race prepped R6, could have bought a race prepped ZX6, but the thing is, I really, really like this platform. That's really kind of the thing about it. Um, I find the Daytona to be a lot more flickable, a lot more fun to use uh, than the ZX6 or the R6s that I've rode, um, that I've ridden rather. And you know, for me, it's a tool for the job. And so when you consider the fact, and so when you consider the fact that this bike comes standard with the quick shifter, standard with Olin's, uh, it's new-ish, um, that's gonna allow me to have a lot of like turnkey track experiences. I'm not gonna have to sit there and, and mess with a bunch of wiring and fueling and this and that. Um, it's, it's just gonna work. So that, that's really the point of it. And so yeah, I mean, that's really it. It's really, it's a tool for the job. It, it's not really something that I'm, I'm sitting here being like, oh my God, like I'm putting it on a pedestal of it being another 675R. I really have no desire to ride this bike on the street. Um, I find it to be completely inappropriate for a street application, to be honest. It's funny how a few years ago, I thought it was a super fun bike to ride on the street, but it's really not that fun. Um, you can't even push anything of what it can do and you can't learn meaningfully in a safe way and this and that. So to me, it's super important to get this thing out on the track and, and really appreciate it and enjoy it for what it is um, because that, that's what it was designed to do. So that's what we're gonna do with it. Uh, today, we're actually leaving it here at the shop because I'm gonna pick it up later and take it to the track. I'm actually not gonna insure this bike at all for the street. So I'm gonna go from here direct to the track once the a garage opens up and, and kind of just put it there and, and maintain it there. Um, so no vlogs on the Daytona just yet. That's probably gonna come a, a little bit later in June or July when we actually get it ready for the track and, and have some fun with it out there. So stay tuned and expect videos of it to come for sure. But for now, uh, this, is, this is all you really get. So thanks again for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for uh, joining me in my Sisyphean journey through owning a third Daytona 675R. Hopefully I don't bend this one at the track. And you know, if I do, I'm gonna put some frame sliders and some covers on it and should be good after a little low slides or something. So uh, thanks again for watching and I'll catch you guys next time. See you later.